Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, April 11th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, my channel is ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. I have a poll up here. It's good for eight more days. Will people alter their cell phone activity after the revelation that service providers are helping governments keep track of its customers, i.e. following you around, using your phones as a GPS device? And they're just disclosing this to the public now. Um, so right now, a majority of uh, voters are saying, 56% are saying, no, they will not alter their activity, while almost 43% say yes. So I still think that that's kind of an optimistic number, 43%, because most um, sheeple uh, probably didn't even get that memo. So, Okay, so this whole first uh, new segment is going to be about our friendly local law enforcement officers. So... Buckle your seatbelt. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Residents upset after friendly dog shot by police. I was going to play the video, but it would not load. So several residents in Boise neighborhood wanted to uh, have some answers as to why the Boise police officer shot and killed what they say was a, quote, friendly dog. The shooting happened on Monday before 5 p.m. It goes on. It says the owner found out Tuesday morning that his four-year-old uh, pit bull named Indo died overnight. So it says here the police say the dog was acting vicious and coming at the, the officer with what appeared to be an intent to attack. So just remember that one video of those two individuals outside Walmart where the police officer said, what? Oh, non-compliance non is hostility. So if you don't capitulate, you don't cut down to their authority, um, you are being hostile. So that's not true. It's just that's how they perceive it. So moving on here, it says that, uh, but people in the neighborhood say that the dog that's not the dog that they knew. They said, quote, the dog ran in the middle of the street right here, was sitting here. You could see the blood pouring from its shoulders, said uh, Jerrain Alvarado. So just minutes before around the corner, two Boise police officers were approaching a home looking for a man wanted for failing to appear in court. So it goes on. It says they were going up to the door. Then they saw the dog come out. Wasn't even going straight towards them. He was just running out because he was free, said McMurrin. And it goes on and it says that the dog was outside for about 15 seconds when the officers said the dog ran at him growling with his teeth barred. And the officer then fired his gun three times. Schoolgirl tells of horror at police uh, station for using taser on pet dog and shooting it dead after it nipped two people. Says police have been accused of heavy-handed tactics after they had tasered and shot a dog dead for biting two people. Says this schoolgirl uh, 12 suffered a graze on the shin as she guided a friend's uh, bull terrier collie across back into their house. Said a neighbor advised her to inform the police about the bite as a precaution, but the schoolgirl says she was horrified when four police cars appeared and officers tasered the pet at least five times. They, uh, Startled animal ran off towards a public park where officers took the decision to shoot it dead with a shotgun to protect the public. So the girl and her mother um, at the dogs and the dog owners uh, criticized the police and said the animal was simply terrified after being shot with high voltage weapon. I can't believe uh, what they did to that poor dog. The girl said the police tasered it and then shot it because they couldn't control it. But the poor dog was just terrified. She goes, I would have never called the police if I had known they were going to kill the dog. They said it didn't deserve to be shot and it didn't need to be. So, But uh, you should kind of expect that, right? So they say a bad apple, right? It's a bad apple. Well, I think the whole tree's rotten, to be honest with you. And if it's not, yeah, they may have good intent. Many police, police officers may have good intent. But they're enforcing a law that uh, is not based off any common law. They're intruding in people's private, private life. And I'll get to that towards the end. It says here, and they're dealing drugs, and they're doing everything that they're sitting, supposedly fighting. So, but it says here, a city of Roswell, Georgia, bullies Andrew Words to death over his backyard chicken. So, an innocent man who had legally been raising a few dozen chickens and other small birds in the backyard of his suburban Atlanta home is now dead following a crusade of terror perpetrated against him in the city of George and Roswell in Georgia. So, he died during a recent raid on his property in which the county marshal tried to legally evict him. This article is from March 30th, 2012, so you may have seen it, but troopers urged to compete for issuing most tickets. An internal state police memorandum urges troopers from the Bethany Barracks to compete over who can write the most tickets. It says here that uh, WTNH-TV reports that the memo from Lieutenant Anthony Shrillo says patrols are to be stepped up on Friday 
Uh, another memo says pizza will be provided to the shift with the highest ticket total. So it goes on and says that it reflects a troop commander's attempt to motivate his personnel and similar efforts happen across the state. But he said the quotas are not imposed on troopers and officers have discretion. They always say that, that there's no quotas and they're, they're not imposed. State police union president says troopers do not need to be told to issue a certain number of tickets to do their jobs. And this is a similar article on the same uh, event or situation or story from the Daily Caller. Quote, we have to issue at least 60 infractions, misdemeanors uh, each shift for a total of 180 infractions in order to outperform both Troop F and Troop G. The memo said, said one day Troop F issued 301 tickets, so Troop G responded by issuing 345 in one day, saying we can do better. Note, if we happen to issue 350 tickets in one day, that would be stellar, the memo concludes. Moving on here, Brazilian student who stole a packet of cookies dies after being tasered by Australian police. So goes on and says he allegedly stolen a packet of cookies from Sydney's shop before he died after being tasered by police. So basically it goes on and says CCTV footage filmed nearby shop shows the man uh, running with a number of policemen in pursuit. And it says he aims what looks like a taser gun at the man who was at the time off screen. They said that the witnesses claimed the Brazilian was shouting, help me, as officers pinned him down to the ground and he stopped breathing and died at the scene. Next up, we have kids say Fresno cops tasered and drowned dad from Tuesday, April 10th, 2012. Fresno police drowned a man by tasering and hog tying him, then sticking a garden hose onto his or into his face and mouth when he pleaded for water. The man's two children claim in federal court. The two minor children, IR and HR, claim that in the summer of 2011, Fresno police restrained their father, uh, Raul Rosas, at the friend's house while responding to a domestic disturbance call. The children say their father was not armed and, quote, had not committed any uh, crime, and quote. After the altercation with John Doe, officer police pepper sprayed Rosas and then tasered him a countless number of times, the complaint states. They said uh, the children claim that their uh, father was tasered for eight to ten more minutes, then hogtied with his ankles tied to his handcuffs behind his back. It uh, says here, um, Decident or decadent stated that he could not breathe and that he needed water. An officer ran water from a hose onto the, his face and mouth to the point of making it more difficult for him to breathe, i.e. waterboarding. Police taser may have sparked fatal car fire in California. It says a car fire that killed a suspect and burned a police officer uh, near Buckham Springs may have been sparked by a taser April 6, 2012. The explosion of fire that followed a pursuit of a wrong way driver may have been caused by a spark from a border patrol officer's taser. Then we have police saying that an officer used a taser on a 15-year-old uh, Penn student, so York City Police Chief said they hesitate to use tasers on youths, but resource officers are not banned from using them. So it goes on, it says that the student faces charges after an incident in which a taser was used on him at school, but his mother believes police should have handled the situation differently. So it says he was causing a disturbance in a middle school classroom uh, when this human resources officer was summoned to help. The student began to struggle with Hernandez and used his taser to subdue him. So... But the mother said uh, that her son was goofing around in math class when he was asked to leave. When he refused, the administrator came in, and basically the other students were dismissed, so they got rid of witnesses. And look at this poll that came up here. Do you think police should be allowed to use tasers on kids and teens? And look what the poll said. 63% of the voters said yes. So, well, I mean, it's not that... Uh, you know, people should expect this stuff to happen when they call the cops. But uh, in a way, they're kind of asking for it, too, because they think that this is the only way to carry out justice. You have to call a third party in to handle private affairs. It says here, cops sued for serving uh, pepper spray at barbecue. So several people attending a barbecue have filed a federal excessive uh, force lawsuit against the city of Zion. Three police officers claiming police used pepper spray uh, injured a group of adults and children while making arrests nearly a year ago. So one of the guests at the barbecue claims she was visibly pregnant when she was pepper sprayed. All claim that they were left injured from the pepper spray as are listed by the cold plaintiffs. So... It goes on and says the police department had no media information on the incident and declined to comment on the pending lawsuit. Remember that woman that was actually a uh, pregnant woman that was pepper sprayed at the, one of the Occupy movements? It says here, Metro officer sued in dog's death, pets shot in backyard uh, during police chase. So Louisville families filed a lawsuit against a police officer alleging that he shot and killed her dog without cause last year while chasing a burglary suspect in the neighborhood. 
So it goes on, it says the dog retreated to his doghouse after being shot where he lay bleeding and screaming for a period of time before bleeding to death. So this is what happened. They, they were going through this private residence and um, the officer followed him. Both were approached by the Doberman. It says a dog leaped onto the suspect and the officer tried to wrestle the man to the ground before the dog started attacking the officer. The officer shot and killed the dog while the suspect ran to the back of another house. Similar to the story in Idaho, police policy allows officers to shoot domestic animals if they are being threatened by the animal. So moving on here, we have two St. Louis police officers charged with punching suspects during separate arrests. So two St. Louis police officers were charged Wednesday uh, with hitting teenage suspects during two separate arrests over the past few months. It goes on, it says, according to reports, the team was arrested for delinquency felony charges. So after being taken into custody in a police cruiser, uh, authorities said Wilson then punched the suspect once in the head while he was still handcuffed with his hands behind his back. In a separate incident, a former St. Louis police officer was charged with punching a 16-year-old suspect in the head after bringing him into custody in late February. Then we have this from April 9th, 2012, coincidence or retaliation, SPD stopped men at gunpoint again. This is the one where the police member, yeah, I'm going to make stuff up story. What well, goes on, it says just days after the investigation on Seattle police featuring two African-American men, uh, those men say SPD officers pulled them over at gunpoint. They said they could not believe the first time that the police officers from Seattle pulled them over at gunpoint, but they were even more shocked when it happened to them a second time. Seattle police declined to comment as the two men have filed a claim in connection with the first stop. But it says that police released a street check report in which they investigated themselves, which they claim shows proper police procedure was used during the second traffic stop. So moving on here, Beloit to pay 265000 to settle strip search lawsuit. So it goes on here and says the city of Beloit has agreed to pay a teenage boy almost a quarter, basically a quarter million dollars to settle a federal lawsuit claiming police violated constitutional rights by strip searching him on the street and slamming his head into a car window. You can go in there and check that out. Links will be posted. Uh, Edwardsville cop accused of taking cell phone video of women in tanning salon. This is from April 9th, 2012. Southwestern Illinois uh, police officer is suspended from a job and free on bond after being accused of illegally making cell phone videos of women, women at tanning salons. Former Santa Fe officer accused of being a creeper. That's the way they worded it. From April 9th, 2012, another complaint has surfaced against a former Santa Fe uh, cop sergeant suspected of masturbating in a squad car. But now there's new allegations of harassment against an 18 year old employee of a local coffee shop. I guess he went in there and he says he doesn't like her having a boyfriend that he and that he noticed her boyfriend driving her car around a lot. And it goes on and basically says that the woman um, tried to bring a harassment complaint against the individual years ago. It says that complaint was handled by Human Resources Officer Raymond Ryle. Ryle has since been promoted to po uh, Chief of Police. Quote, she said, they had plenty of opportunities over the course of many years to do something about it, and they refused. April 9, 2012, Dartmouth officer facing charges resigns. A Dartmouth police officer facing criminal charges after being accused of groping a department store employee has resigned. This was while he was on duty and assigned to the mall. He was pleaded not guilty. Prior to his res resignation, he was on paid administrative leave. Next up, police officer accused of coercing a teen for sex. You can go in there and check that out. Going to keep moving. It says here, man hit with taser after running from police. And it goes on and says that uh, Butler was yelling at another man, i.e. he was having an argument when police arrived. So they hit him up with obstructing an officer and resisting arrest. There's... It was a city man who was shot by a drunk off-duty cop during an altercation, i.e. a private argument. So the cop tried to get in there and stop it, and what? He shot somebody. Iowa City man tasered after threatening police April 9th. Iowa officers say they were out with several people arguing in front, so they're having a private argument when the cops got involved. So remember what I'm saying, dude. Noncompliance is hostility. So this is the police here, combative man, tasered three times. So a 21-year-old man was shocked three times with a taser at about 1.15 a.m. Sunday after an argument with another man. So just having a private argument. Again, pigs getting involved in people's private business. Mesa police used taser to subdue Chandler Mann. That's right. Uh, before subduing with a taser and arresting him on suspicion of aggregated, aggravated assault and possession of drugs. So police say they moved his hand towards his waistband. He's lucky he didn't get shot over what? Marijuana and some meth. We have a Hawaii police officer arrested in an alleged marijuana growing operation. And then we have this. A former deputy accused in meth sting pleads guilty to possession and sale of stolen firearms. Good cop, bad cop. How corrupt police work with the drug dealer. We have border patrol agents charged with gun smuggling into Mexico. 
County police retaliated against a whistleblower who was reporting misconduct by what? Denying him promotion. Police officer charged with stealing a camera from a warehouse. He says it was not being used as evidence. And police used taser on a crash victim who just wanted to be left alone.